Welcome, good afternoon. We're Doña Nata, a multi-sensory dining experience that will be opening in Atlanta. I'm Antonio. I'm Angela. And I'm Natalia. And this is my grandmother, Natalia. She earned the title of Doña, which refers to a community leader who's humble and strong. She was also a great Mexican cook. In 2008, when I moved to Atlanta, it was hard to find the dishes I had growing up at our family table. Then, years later, I moved to Singapore, where I was inspired by the iconic food halls, which reminded me of a fonda, which is a Mexican market-style eatery. It was then when the inspiration to run a Mexican fonda came to me, and today, we're eager to present to you Doña Nata. Doña Nata addresses problems for both aspiring food service entrepreneurs and consumers. Our food service entrepreneurs deal with a high chance of failure, a crowded competitive landscape, and rising operating costs. Now, food trucks, which are hot right now, may be a potential solution, right? Not exactly. With food trucks, you have, your revenues are at the mercy of the weather, you have low purchasing power, and little to no customer seating. Oh, <laughs> and if you're a consumer in the Atlanta market and you're craving a th quality Mexican food, your only real options are watered down Tex-Mex chains, independent restaurants with, with little brand appeal or proximity to urban populations, or expensive full service restaurants. So what's the solution? Doña Nata. Doña Nata is a food service management company uh, of a curated selection of food stalls, each of them operated by entrepreneurs and chefs. Also, Doña Nata manages a beverage uh, stall that offers specialty Mexican drinks and an upscale cocktail bar that highlights Mexican experience. What is our value proposition? So for our partners, we make it easy for them so they can focus on what they know how to do best and what they love to do, making delicious food. They benefit from a lower initial capital investment, from operational support in a way of procurement, cost, cost management, payroll management, day-to-day -day operations, and also financial reporting. And they don't have to worry about marketing initiatives or maintaining the common, the common areas. We will, we will take care of that uh, for them. For our consumers, we're offering an immersive experience to a wide variety of Mexican cuisine. In, a, in an atmosphere that they can, they can enjoy a cultural experience at the same time. For all, Doña Nata empowers the community and creates value for each of them. That ecosystem is made up of three parts. Food stalls, which are operated by food stall operators, and then a beverage service and cocktail bar, which is managed by us. Doña Nata management seeks business-ready stall operators that will submit their own business plan to us and offer tastings of their food upon request. They will be evaluated on the quality of their food concept, the stall's financial viability, and their demonstration of a culinary core competency. So that this way, their menu specialties work together with the other stall operators to increase demand instead of, uh, instead of competing for it. Customers have two options for beverages. They can, go, they can go to the food stalls and get soft drinks, and those revenues would go to the stall operators, or they can also order beers and homemade fruit juices from us at our beverage stall or from our circulating beverage carts that go around the dining room so you don't have to get up to get another cold beer. There's also a cocktail bar I've been waiting to tell you about. So in our architectural rendering of Doña Nata, mm. while it loads, I'll tell you about it. In our architectural rendering, you can go to any of the eight independent and separate food stalls and also visit our beverage service across the, across the dining room. This way, there, there's easy access. Although all the stalls are lined up together to minimize their footprint, uh, there's lots of design possibilities for individualization. Now let's head back to Bar, to bar, to bar Maria Felix, where you can impress your friends by taking them to this clandestine cocktail bar that specializes in Mexican tequila, mezcal, and pulque cocktails. There's also raw bar ceviche, perfect guacamole, and handmade corn tortillas. That brings us to who our vendors are. Our ven we're Doni Nata is looking for stall partners among the 1,095 registered food trucks, the 1,000 plus independent restaurants, 
and the 3,760 chefs and plenty of entrepreneurs in the Atlanta area. This is a view our stall partners will see every day. Above, our internal tech platform that provides valuable analytics and performance metrics, and below, our view our back of the house spine corridor, where there will be private stall openings and sacrosanct lockers on the right, and on the left, shared space, like cold and dry storage, heavy dishwashing, and an administrative office for receiving. So, why is the Atlanta market such a great fit for Doni Nata? Atlanta was the number one moving destination in 2016. Also, it's home to 18 Fortune 500 companies, and it's the third most prolific state for the film industry and the fifth most prolific state for tech. Additionally, restaurant sales for Georgia grew 3.5% last year, and the Hispanic population has been booming exponentially. Our customer segments are upwardly mobile Hispanics, urban transplants, and local Atlantans who are looking for destination restaurants. Our model creates a blue ocean market. We're unique by being the first food hall concept in the Atlanta area that curates its outsourced providers under the thematic umbrella of Mexican cuisine. And we're leveraging human capital, industry know-how, and technology in order to do so. The same goes with our bar. We identified this market opportunity in December when we went down for our market research. Together, these components will bring back customers to Doña Nata time and time again. So how does Doña Nata make money? Doña Nata has three revenue streams. The first two of them are company operated, and the third one are the stalls. The stalls provide uh, revenues uh, through a 1,000 uh, management fee, which is on a monthly basis, and also a sales royalty of 7%. Together, as a whole, we deliver a net operating income of 28%. Working with Natalia for the past 10 months has been the experience of a lifetime. We met at Cornell and we quickly bonded over our love of food and family traditions. Her previous work experience and the tenacity and grit that I have witnessed makes her a perfect fit for running this company. I connected with Antonio last semester over our love of food and our experience working in restaurant kitchens. Antonio, has, Antonio grew up in his family's Italian-American restaurant cooking alongside his grandmother. He's managed some of the finest dining rooms in America, including Boule in New York City, and he's worked in Rosa Mexicano. Antonio's skill sets include <clears throat> branding, customer experience, and management. <laughs> uh, we connected with Angie last semester in our entrepreneurship class. Angie has a tremendous back-of-the-house experience. She started working at the Statler Hotel as a prep cook and worked her way up to a sous chef. She's currently managing a 50-person 50, 50 meal plan uh, on a part-time basis. Um, together, we have the skills and the grit to, make, to bring Doña Nata to life. In December that we were in Atlanta, we identified an ideal warehouse for Doña Nata in Armour Yards. In order to move forward, we're seeking for $450,000 in the form of a convertible note. Doña Nata plans to grow by offering F&B management services to developers and owners who would like to turn their dormant spaces into dining destinations. We are also looking to open more Doña Natas, and we're exploring other food cultures, for example, a Mediterranean cuisine with a wine bar or um, American barbecue with a whiskey bar. For us, Doña Nata is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you can see yourself at our table, please come speak to us after these presentations. Thank you very much, and we welcome your questions. A lot of fun putting this together, and it yeah. definitely is a high concept. It's experiential, it's communal. Um, but we actually had a food truck in Milan, our company, uh, in a Mercado, Mercado Met Metropolitano, two summers ago. And based on my experience there, I have concerns, a few concerns, mm -hmm. um, which I think 
possibly a rem you know, can be remedied. Um, but it has to be a win-win situation. And you're asking the operators to provide financials. Um, they might not be real sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And add to that, you're sort of skimming, potentially, all the alcohol and the beer from them and hiding it behind a wall. So tell me about how, you know, if you think this is a win-win, um, and, and the appetizers. Yes. So, you know, tell me a little bit about um, yeah, so how you're, how you're going to make it work for your operators. Yeah, for the operators, like, the idea is to, like, provide to them a turnkey restaurant where all the administrative side has been taken care of. Whenever they come in, the system, the internet is ready for them to log in, and they have access to systems to manage their POS system, their payroll, uh, all the administrative side. The only thing that they will have to come and bring is their equipment, whatever they need to cook, uh, prep up their stall, and that's it. And we're there to help them to, to like educate them on the on the financials on how to make this this the business more technical and train them on the recipe, on the recipe side, how to standardize that, how to uh, track cost. And the win-win situation comes to us in a way that um, they also sell uh, sodas and waters in their stalls. And we're focusing on the specialty drinks, more like aguas frescas, which is like juice fruit and beer and all of that. So we're attracting, and with the bar, we're actually attracting a different segment of customers so we can all benefit together from this uh, operational synergy. Did you consider turning the bar around so it's part of the communal setting? There's something unique about having it clandestine. Um, there's lots of, there's lots of, I've seen it done in, around the country in very unique ways, and that sort of, it, it kind of heightens the excitement of going there. Um, uh, there there's, there's a couple of, ex, uh, of examples in New York and Chicago, I can think of particularly, that have been really successful at doing that. And so because of the, 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 the increasing cosmopolitan character of Atlanta, would be right to do it in this, in this way. Okay. And, and you think it matches the concept of this open experiential um, food market? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, great idea, guys. It, it, it will work. My concern, it's a business plan competition. It's a great presentation. Well done. But it's a business plan competition. So on a business plan basis, you've got these stall, uh, you've projected 100% occupancy and very high sales for these stall operators. They're all going to do 600, 7% uh, yielding 45,000, you're going to have to do 600,000 in sales per stall uh, and 100% occupancy in your modeling to get you to your cash on cash. So would you just give me some color as to how you arrived at all those conclusions? Yes. Uh, so we were talking to uh, some people that are in different markets with a similar setting, like uh, rating market in Philadelphia. Um, and we got, and we also went to Atlanta back to like uh, Crack Street Market, Pond City Market, which are the new uh, businesses that open uh, up with a dining hall uh, style, and we're talking to them. We got to the like sales um, projection of 480,000 uh, a year. We did a sensitivity analysis, and even if that drops 30 percent, which is like about uh, 322,000, we're still uh, we're still break even, and the stalls still break even in their own individual P&L. Did I? Did that make sense? Yeah, maybe the business plan isn't clear, but you're showing 45,000 of income from each stall coming back to you. Oh, I, I get it, yeah. Because the, in that one, the 45,000 comes from like 7% uh, on the 40, 40, 480,000 of the annual sales projection, plus uh, 12,000 for a, an, an annual fee for the management fee, which is 1,000 a month. And okay. then that's your 48,000. So you're doing, their installs collectively are doing $5 million in revenue in order to pay that 7% annually. Correct. correct, yeah, correct. And then uh, you're also 100% occupied which is an assumption that I just want you to get me comfortable. If I'm going to invest with you, get me comfortable. Yes. We, 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 well, for the start, like, we're going to open, like, we're assuming we're opening with 100% of the stall so you can bring the people in. Uh, we did have, like, we thought in the risk, uh, risk mitigation section, we noticed that there's, that's a risk that we might, we might have, like, one or two stalls. Uh, another idea that came up to us is like, what if we reach out to pop-ups, you know? Maybe for those three, six months that it will be open, we'll bring them on board, and then we'll, we'll even like, uh, might be able to have a markup on the lease so they can come for those three, six months, do their concept, uh, prove their concept, and then and during that period, we'll already have someone else ready to get on board. Okay, and how did you arrive at the design basis of the back of the house? 
where you have uh, a number of stall operators, but you have communal prep, communal yes. storage, everything else. How, how do you intend to manage sure. that? Actually, the, the, so the prep is private in, in each individual stall. The shared space is more for storage. And so this way, we've, we've devised a way that they can have their own private storage, even though it's uh, collectively it's stored in the same area, but it's private to them, so they'll feel secure. There's heavy dishwashing. They might not be able to do that in the stall, even though there will be sinks. Um, and then, as well, they'll have an office for receiving. So they'll have all the, 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 the essentials that they need in that shared area, but most of the food preparation is done within that private 180-foot stall. And for that, we'll have to uh, do a scheduling for them. So getting back to the stall, is there a hood and ansel system in each stall? Uh, uh, sorry, a hood? So getting back to each mm -hmm. stall, I was wondering if there's a hood and fire suppression system in each yeah. stall. Because when you look at the cap, uh, capital budget, it, did, it didn't show that there was uh, money allocated for that. Yes, uh, no, uh, because, uh, we, we, well, it is allocated within the build out of the, of the whole like, uh, building once we acquire the warehouse. But the capital investment to set up the individual stall, it's, it, it belongs to the, to the stall operator. I think I have one last question. So going back to the $5 million in sales that the eight stalls are gonna do in the first year, that means each of the individual businesses are doing about $600,000 in revenue. So if you're getting your $300,000 management fee, it assumes that they're doing about $600,000 in sales for each of the stalls. Why as a stall operator would I move into your space if I can do $600,000 in sales, why not just open up a chomp or have my own independent standalone? Yeah, place? actually, I, 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 I lied you there. So the, the annual sales for first stall is uh, 480000 So total for the eight stalls, uh, we have one, two, three, four, uh, close to $4 million, right, for the full stalls. So why would then I come to other ones? It's because of the market that we're going to. Uh, we're going to like entrepreneurs, chefs, um, uh, food trucks that would like to span into a set, uh, set uh, setting. So they're looking for a way to continue to prove their concept. And uh, most of the times for them, their business acumen is, is not um, as, as developed. OK, other food halls in, in Manhattan are not centric to one cuisine. And you've opted to be one cuisine centric. Why is that? Well, our business model shifted a little bit in, 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 this, in kind of evaluating how we were going to take Doña Nata. Um, by having it under one cuisine, we're actually offering that area, the market need that we evaluated in, all, in, our, in our market research, it's in Appendix 10 um, particularly, where we can actually, um, where we can actually provide an in-depth experience instead of having a, a multivariate experience along different cuisines. Um, the, the beverage portion of it also uh, supplements that, ex that experience as well. Um, and, and, and there are some, some concepts that are more vertically oriented. Is Italy is a good example of that, for example. So we're kind of like in the middle of there. And when my partner was speaking about uh, pop-ups, for example, yes, it's, it's under that thematic umbrella of Mexican cuisine, so those pop-ups would have to evolve within our brand. That's exciting for us. That's where you can use real creativity. That's something that I enjoy doing in order to always maintain them full and busy. And it also gave us a competitive edge because a lot of the footholds that you're seeing right now, they're all mixed with a lot of different cuisines. We want to provide a unique experience to certain cuisine. And it also gives us the opportunity, the flexibility that the model provides to move on to later on to what I just mentioned, like a focus on Mediterranean cuisine with a wine bar and build an experience towards that. And that came out as a result of our like, customer discovery uh, um, research that we did. We we're talking to people and trying to find out why did they, why did, what did they enjoy from like, the dining experiences. And they always came back to talk about uh, an experience. They, they will remember one or two dishes, but they always went back to the experience. So that's why we found it so valuable to create those experiences for them. One quick question on takeout. Takeout is a huge factor in the restaurant business. I didn't see anything in the business plan about this. The takeout is included uh, within the projection that we have for the stalls. There is an opportunity for delivery that we, 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 haven't, uh, yeah, we haven't added, but that's, that's an opportunity that the stalls can take on. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you so much. You.